Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another Golden Age Stories stream. We're going to be doing some Stellaris multiplayer here. And, uh, we've got, uh, oh, we're going to have to restart the game here because I switched some settings. Well, now that your stream's up, did you guys watch the, uh, debate? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I think the winner of that debate is probably Voyager One, which is leaving the gal or the solar system at fucking seventeen <laughs> kilometers per yeah, second. Yeah, the further away you are from the debate, the more you are winning. Like I was, I was decently distant away from the debate, way more winning than either Biden or Trump. Um, I'd have to say the moderator was a little bit more winning than either of those two. I, I'm not like no, a huge. No, he was Chris crippled with no mute button. Oh my god. Yeah, I. I I'm not a huge Chris Wallace fan, like it, by by any sense of the stretch of the imagination, but I do respect him as a pretty decent journalist. Uh, for the I, I don't really. To I know he's from Fox lineup. News, but I don't know him, and I don't I don't know his work. I've, I don't watch, I guess, uh, the Fox News. Are you talking about Chris Matthews? Or Chris Wallace. Whatever Wallace. Yeah, Chris the guy who was Wallace. moderating the event. Yeah, I didn't like. I don't really know who that is, but I felt like he presented things fairly at least and you oh, know Chris Wallace, uh, I've, i watch his work quite a bit he's he's very conservative he's a very conservative person but he is not a trump fan he's not he's no way in, involved in the boot, boot leaking of he's the one of the more like actual journalists that fox employs huh. <laughs> well that yeah i guess that adds up <laughs> go figure yeah it's and on that note also did you guys see the trailer for borat 2 uh -uh. Oh, it's coming out uh, like a week before the election or something like that. And uh, there's rumors that it is going to be really bad for someone in Trump's uh, circle when it releases. But I guess the whole premise of it is that uh, Borat has his daughter here and he's trying to give her to Mikhail Penis. Or Mike Pence. Oh, <laughs> God. Mikhail Penis. And uh, you remember that news article from way back during the inauguration when, or not the inauguration, it was maybe the inauguration, but uh, when Mike Pence was speaking and that guy in a Trump costume went running through the crowd with like a girl over his shoulder. Oh, Turns you know out that was Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, so I, <laughs> I saw a clip of that today and I was wondering what's going on here. Yeah, that, that made the news for a brief minute because of how crazy everything is when it happened. And everyone just kind of laughed it off. And it turns out that it was part of the Borat movie. Oh. Well, there you go. Alright, I'm going to reach out to Omega. Or I thought I would. He's not even on this app platform. Where the fuck is he? I'm back. Um, I'm just waiting for you whenever you... Uh... Oh, I can send a request over, I guess. I can't. Somebody else is joining. Oh, is it still happening? No. Nope. You, you can make a request. Can? Yep. I see both of your requests. Confirming. We'll get those loaded up. I just sent a message to Omega. He's offline, but maybe he just looks offline, so who knows? Maybe he'll see it, maybe he won't. Um, we'll give him... I don't know, he's been in every game. Let's give him a solid five minutes. Which Sounds very reasonable. 7.13, or 13 after the hour. We'll be time to start. Ish. Somewhere in that band... Nobody say I hope we hit the end game. Is that where he did? I think we're really close to the end game right now. We're in the uh, it'll happen in the next seventy eight years. That's what she said. No, I thought we were closer than that. Well, it's not scheduled to begin until after the year five hundred. I thought the end game was five or four hundred, and then uh, mid game was four hundred. Five, yeah, no, it was five hundred, and then uh, and then it hit fifty years from five hundred to five hundred. Oh, so then in the next few years. Yeah, so we're, we're basically at the end game right now. 
27 years. Yeah, somewhere in there. Great. Oh, that's great. I wonder if Omega is on any other platforms as a friend of mine. Last online two days ago is dead. Oh shit. Wait, what was the debate? The Rona? <laughs> oh no. Oh no, uh, did the debater get him? Don't know. The master debater. The master debater don't. got him. And done. That's it. That's the end, man. Good luck and thanks for you all. Just letting all you kids out there know don't masturbate. It'll make you go blind. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, I have glasses, but I'm not blind. Matt, how does that go? Uh, I'd rather spill my seed in the belly of a whore than on the than on the floor or something like that. Josh, why the fuck would I know how it goes? What? <laughs> You're the one who's told it to me like 20 years ago or whatever. Probably just a saying, Josh. It is better. Saying. It's better that your seed fall into the belly of a whore than spill upon the ground. So say it, the Lord. See, told you. So say it, the Lord. <laughs> okay. Uh, sounds very uh, uh Bible sounds things. very uh yeah, Bible thumpy. Like every seat is sacred kind of shit. There is a passage like that in the Bible. I'm not sure if it's exactly that. There's it's a Monty like, Python song. They talk about whores in that passage? Well, not the Monty not Python song. In the Monty Bible. Python song, not really. Nerp, diddly derp, for derp, 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 derp. Omega! This is very unlike him, I'm confused. Yeah, he's usually pretty, uh, pretty on time. Maybe this is the, uh, the time that, uh, I fixed my border gore. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the galaxy is ripe with opportunity. It's okay, Omega. We left you alive. We only took chunks out of your empire in order to establish a much better looking galaxy. <laughs> I don't know. It's, who knows what he might do? No, I mean, well, I don't. I don't think he can take us, and I, we're not going to attack him. Well, I don't, right, I don't think he's let's attack just us. play this out for a second. If we give. If control is handed over to the game, he will suddenly have more caps. <laughs> They're bigger caps. Uh, not on his fleet. That's the AI is still shit at building really good fleets. But it's uh, it's possible. I mean, who knows? You never know. You could uh, end up turning into the end game crisis himself. I know he's pretty fucking powerful. That's for sure. Yeah, I got. Well, I don't know how long do we say we hold on to. Uh... Well, you know, I said five minutes. That was four minutes ago. Okay. Um, I am willing to accept, you know, conversation on how much longer we should wait. Well, do we have any ways of contacting him other than the standard internet protocols? Um, so I tried to reach him over, uh, uh, Steam and Discord to no avail. I think I have him on LinkedIn. Probably hit him on that. Yeah, it's not that great of a communication. It's not, but he might get he might, it. He might, you know. I, I guess we just don't have, a, like, a, a human phone number for him. No. Well, yeah, I guess, uh... Huh? <gasps> Omega! Oh, you had us scared. We thought the debates killed you. You, you, made, it. you made it in the time allotted. Well yeah, done. perfectly. <laughs> allotted. Very sorry. I completely lost track of time today. Loading in now. Glad we got you. 
The game will now be better. 14 minutes, that's what your life is worth to us, Omega. <laughs> no, it's 13 minutes. 13 yeah. minutes. <laughs> we were willing to debate on the length. Oh yeah, we were talking about how we have no way of communicating with you outside of internet protocol. That's right, we were just discussing the potential of extending the length, and I was going to try to find you on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you made it. Hey dude, I got a <laughs> yeah, job really. for you. I need you to play Stellaris on... Golden Age stories stream. It's very important. I was gonna send you certified mail, but then I discovered Trump shut down the postal service, so. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's not shut down. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what you're talking about. There is no mail anymore. We got rid of it completely. Well, you, you know, I never check the mailbox anyway. Sent you oh. a message, Brian. Thank you. Collected. Dude, I. I don't know, like. I'd be almost happy to get rid of the mail. <laughs> almost. You know, besides, like, the uh, the knowledge that I know that it's very important. Like, I just, I hate going to my mailbox. Like, it's very important, but it's also filled with garbage. And the garbage, if they could abandon the garbage, it would be a lot more manageable. But how will I get my mail order Magic the Gathering cards if you shut down the postal service? You'll get them via FedEx, FedEx and yes, DHL. Or FedEx, UPS. and there won't be any, like... The, the postal service is like the bare minimum, and they, they do partially kind of because they exist. The FedEx and UPS have to compete with them, but if there's no competition in the post office, they can charge whatever they want. No, the post office does keep things down. Yeah, I see the post office like what government should be. They should be the baseline minimal effort service. Plus, that, the post office is the only thing keeping FedEx and UPS saying we deliver to everybody. Yep. Yep. Because as soon as it's not profitable to go to people far out, why would they do it if there's not a, like not that competition driving them to? I think if the government got into healthcare and did the same thing, we'd probably be in a better place. Well, that's a little too political, probably. Are you trying to tell me that <laughs> everything is just profit motivated, it's not a big help to everything. I mean, no, I'm yeah. sorry, I, I forgot this. Whoa, is... whoa, are you saying that America should not be the place where you can just make a shit fucking ton of money? Is that what you're I forgot my for? place for a second. I forgot that I'm just uh, down on my luck future millionaire that hasn't made it yet. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> like everybody else, duh. yeah, yeah. But I mean, shouldn't America be the place where you can come and absolutely make way insanely more money than somebody else, and in doing so, like, drown out entire communities? <laughs> what do you mean? I mean that's nobody, basically what nobody... we're founded on, so yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't what? you want the ability to have the, the that so that, like, around you, everything flows into what you have, ultimately? Oh my god. What do you mean nobody told you it was no. all about profit? Did nobody tell you about puberty either? Like, no. <laughs> nice. Nice. Besides, nice. everyone knows that the, low, the, the people at the bottom would be fine in that situation because once your cup it runneth over, it's going to trickle down to them, you know? Yeah, it's really good though that I've been able to upgrade my cup every fucking time that it gets. <laughs> yeah, my cup has never run over because I keep buying a bigger cup. Yeah, but one of these days, <laughs> one of these days I'll run out of. Yeah, it'll the cup will be too expensive to buy, and then some of the water will. In order for that to work, there'd have to be this thing that exists in video games called a currency cap. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's just, you know, you would have your cup would be so big that the water would go bad. So you would have to have, like, a cleaner and a recycler and yeah. uh, all these other infrastructure bits now to support your cup. You know, and you think you're just making jobs, but, you know, really it's just an entire, like, communities. Whether they all live in the same place or not. But everybody who works at the same place is a community. So you just form this community that serves you. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm rich. Now I'm rich. <laughs> Trickle up economics. And if they need something, <laughs> they can ask to take a little from the cup, and if you're feeling nice, you know, maybe. <laughs> but the thing is, is like, I don't know. I'm being sarcastic, obviously. I oh, think yeah. <laughs> that, you know, it is, I think America should be a place where you 
can be incredibly successful, but I don't think that it should be at the detriment to everyone else. Yeah, it's a balancing act. I mean, yeah. I, I, I believe in capitalism for a lot of stuff. I do believe in the idea of, uh, you know, if you, if you try harder or you, you are selling in a skill more than other people, that you should be, you know, uh, be able to be uh, lifted up because of that those skills and that you should try and find what's your best skill and how to, you know, best put your, uh, you know, your skill at work in society. Um, but I also believe that we should have fire departments not controlled by profit-driven stuff. I believe police should be non-profit-driven. Oh, I believe hospitals should be non-profit-driven. I think cures and concepts of contrast, uh, you know, like everything dealing with this, like, there's tons of stuff that don't need to be profit driven shit. Especially fucking education, which is the dumbest prisons. fucking thing. Prison, prisons prison. are huge. What? They expect Why? their for profit prisons is dumb. Why? Why would you have a for profit that doesn't make any fucking sense? Like, <laughs> we need to ensure we get more prisoners. Well, that's not what our country is well, about. I mean, the idea isn't wrong. You know, the idea is that we would have both federal prisons and public, or, you know, whatever, private. Uh, private, private for-profit uh, prisons. Uh, well, so, so for-profit is, is definitely the problem. The but, problem you know, like, is for-profit, It doesn't profit, mean there yeah. shouldn't be prisons that are run by the people. Or, or I think prisons as a concept is fundamentally flawed, especially in the modern era. I like, for something? Yes. No, that's a, no, that's a good argument. Yeah. Like, if you walk across the street here, you risk two years and, like, three months in prison. Like, why is prison... Well, and that's because here, prison isn't about any type of help or assistance. It's all about punishment. So this is my idea. I think that instead of prison, we should just send people to school. Like, not children's school. But, like, you, you literally have to, like, go back to, like, high school. Not, like, a high school. But the prison is the adult, you know, you fucked up and now you can't be in society. We gotta reteach you shit. <laughs> oh, be careful sure. with re-education centers. Those are <laughs> yeah, I mean, do be careful with that. Because that would be a very strict of a of education. There. <laughs> specific well. to their uh, crime. But, I mean, you know, also, it's not like you could put everybody in... I mean, you couldn't send them to a public... Or even, you know, privately owned necessarily school. It would have well, you don't to be send the them to thing. you don't. The, the prison is a school. Like, that's, right. Not, and now it's a re-education center. Right? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, you can totally 1984 it and stuff like that. Absolutely. But well, no, it, but it has to be a place where you can go and get better. Right. You know, right back like, in. You're. You're. Uh, great. Or uh, like 1945 it. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. You know, it's got to be a place where whatever whatever it is that ails you, and you agree that this ails you, and you want to be different, you know, uh, you know, can, can get you where you need to go. Some kind of rehab, basically. Uh, and uh, you know, there's got to be a rainbow of security considerations for very, you know, at different levels of of. Uh, Danger rating rated prisoners because that also exists, you know. Like I, I'm sure I'm, we're all stumbling here in areas we don't know actually shit about, but no, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're all very, <laughs> very non-intellectual when it comes to this, actually. Probably. Yeah, but I don't know. Like I think I don't know. Like we, it, you're, I don't like prisons, but I also don't want criminally insane people to be able to have access to me. <laughs> uh, criminally you know? insane people don't. I mean, they do. No, they go to mental institutions <laughs> where they don't get any help. <laughs> it's I mean, even worse. But they don't get any help at either of those places, so they're just as good as each other. Yeah, the cr criminally insane is a different type of criminal, but it is. Uh, it is criminal. And I, I, but I agree with you. I don't want dangerous criminals running around. But I also, I think we need to reevaluate why people are dangerous criminals. What dangerous criminals? We could shoot them at the sun. We could, I we could just deal with it like we were. We should deal with our garbage. Shoot. It's really simple. If they float, they're a witch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm into that kind of rehabilitation that Dahmer got. That's if, <laughs> if they weigh less than a duck. If they drown because they don't float, they weren't a witch, and we will mourn them. 
dead. And then we'll go, whoop. <laughs> wow. Whew. Since humans at standard lead, you know, as long as you're not flailing about, you just control your breathing flows. Like, that's kind of a human thing. But anyway, it's that. Or in C. I'm pretty sure they were also, like, tied up and possibly tied to something. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, like a bag of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that Very case, popular. They, yes, they Very popular. <laughs> and if they got out of it, they were a witch. They were a witch. <laughs> Yeah, very efficient way to get rid of political enemies in an early settlement. Yeah. Good way. Uh... Alright, so are we are ready to unpause this bitch? Uh, I... Oh, I... we're playing a game? Yeah. <laughs> no, we were just talking <laughs> politics on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a dangerous game. Yeah. I, I found... say none of what we actually said could be qualified as talking politics. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Some positive bitch. <laughs> I yeah, found the C SPAN clip of uh Sasha Baron Cohen in in the the costume. Oh like when, <laughs> when it originally when aired. It yeah, like when it happened. It was on C SPAN. Like you see it distantly in the crowd just going on. Ah. Man, what's gonna happen next in space? Yeah, this is uh, I'm in space. The time of waiting now for me. The long Guess darkness. Uh, Once again, in darkness and in space. God, way too much food. Gather everyone. What's that you say? Bird people? Evil robots drove you from your kingdom? <laughs> <laughs> but how could this be? <laughs> there are no evil robots. They are all friendly. We only politely asked them to leave with the point of a gun. I mean, originally it was, you know, bombarding their planet and taking it over. Now that we're here, we're just peacefully telling them. Weeks up, everyone. And yet, someone gave Chores Compass territory in their space and left them alone. <laughs> Chores Compass sounds like a place in Skyrim. Oh, uh, these guys are the. Uh, yeah, these are the Caravanners. Caravaneers. They're Caravaneers. The Caravanser. Caravanser. There we go. Anyways, yeah, these guys, so... Yeah, I left them alive. They're not... How thoughtful of you. They usually <laughs> give crappy-ass stuff. Crappy-ass. That crowd. Activate that. Say what? 
did you go? Another one? Yeah. Is there no limit to their resources? Ah. Ring worlds, my more ring worlds. Hmm? That's the plan. I actually pretty much stopped producing hops, so these are just empty worlds for now. <laughs> well, I don't know, guys. Do we finish off the Nth and give the Bruven the North? The orange guys, they want to take the orange guys out. Oh, they're so tiny. Might as well yeah. just do them a favor. Seems, <laughs> seems so. I vote yes. Matt, get ready for more refugees. Is this like America's <laughs> Got Talent, but for uh, aliens? <laughs> Matt, if you need any extra food, let me know. You don't have to live like a refugee in the deep <laughs> state. <laughs> Deep state sandwiches. They're, They're fighting. Pretty good. Stop fighting. <laughs> this shouldn't take long. They didn't have any friends. Oh. They've got a fleet of. So I got a 5k army on this planet and a shield generator. Goodness, what are you doing? Taking that? that planet? No, that's a little nice little. Oh, it's pretty nice. Oh, the Sandra thing comes there as well. That's the uh, purple dudes. Oh, those guys are idiots. We should kill them too. <laughs> Are they, they, uh, they took, well, they're not idiots. They've actually done very well, but so I've got some of their stuff over in my land between myself and the assembly of Camdor because I took their home world. Oh. Um, so that, that area is like a border gourd up, and then they're they're there, but they had somehow planted themselves inside the Empire of Enth at some point. Um, and then when they most recently went to war with them, they took advantage or where either when we went to war, just like they're doing now, they took advantage popped in there and like stole more shit because they've got claims and if they can execute their war in the middle of our war well it's cheap yeah yeah i'm a little impressed there <laughs>
in a bit. Yeah, I'm running Supremacy and I have a huge fleet now. Nice. What is this independent tribunals again? Nothing, nothing. We'll just try you for, like, looking at us money. Is oh. this repealing it or to, to put it in place? Looks like it's to put it in place. I think I would be in trouble because I, I think I am indiscriminately bombing people. <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah, I'm opposed to that. That thing's horrible. Yeah. Wait. Try the solar. Ooh, gateways. Oh, can I make? Didn't remember. Oh. There's my dog, Bilbo. Hey, Bilbo. What you doing, big guy? Where are you going? Huh, ah, he left. He came in here, flapped his ears, and left. So, he's a good boy. We know that. Whew. Game's chugging. Oh, there it goes. A little better. Looks like my controls just like... Oh, yeah. Mine was, for sure. Not just my own. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. It was, it was chunking pretty hard, though, for a sec. That might have been... Noish. Being opposed. Yeah, I just want to bring the attention of the current thing on the Galactic Community floor to the machines of the uh, galaxy. It's very beneficial to everyone that's not a machine. I noticed that that seemed like it was like a type a of the soul like <laughs> legislation. Yeah, we make soulless pay taxes as they should. The <laughs> robots. Uh, uh, I don't think that's fair. I don't think not having a soul is fair. It's not fair. Like, they don't have to deal with things like feelings. Uh, Prime Network supports it, so I'm a little confused. Yeah, I don't know why the Prime Network is supporting it. Because... Wait, where did all this weight go from? Where did you just get 200,000 weight, Josh? You probably switched. You probably, from me. You probably have switched. Imagine if he switched into the supremacy tree to double his. I bet he'd have even more weight if he had to switch to the supremacy tree under policies. All right. Well, if these robots hate themselves, I'll vote for it too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually have any robots in my system at all. I got a handful of, like, robots from the 70s, that's it. But I just think this is wrong. 
<laughs> All the people in my empire were like, yeah, fuck those robots. <laughs> Terrible. But I still think you're people. <laughs> I still think we're people. I just think, uh, I, th I think we have, as the two robotic empires that have, uh, gobbled up some of the most power in the galaxy, I think that we are doing for a little tight. Basically, the two, uh, the way that I'm looking at this is more of a type of the, uh, uh, for me, this is the type of the ring world rather than the type of the solar. I mean, it does reduce consumer gets, but I suppose that doesn't affect you much. No, it doesn't affect me at all. Robots don't use consumer I mean, we technically do because we've got a bunch of these, like, people are kicking out of our country. Still gotta feed them, provide stuff for them until they leave. Apparently, we make 643 of them a month, so 477. That's what happens. I did say I was backing out of uh, Galactic Fitness. Hmm? I, I lost all of those favors. I just lost all those favors, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that might be how that works. Um, huh. Weird. I just went to abstain, and uh, I lost all the diplomatic weight that I had so I wonder if I end up going back, that we will uh, Hey, you should try that out. Oh, yeah. Still have enough time to change my vote again if I want. Just making sure that there's nobody that's going to get crippled by this. No. Uh, just you. <laughs> <laughs> He's not building pops anyway, so yeah. it's actually not going to affect him much at all. I think some of my world might be building pops by accident, but I, like, I don't know, every single one of my resources is maxed. Like, I don't, I really don't care about my <laughs> I could get, I, I mean, I could easily, like, like do a huge power-up on my empire and just take all the of freaking work. Uh, there's no point. You know? I think we have enough to fight the endgame crisis right now. I think we're close. I think we're fine, yeah. Be between you and Pseudo and Omega now, and then the rest of us can scramble together enough to fight. Probably. Oh yeah, you guys are all. But we won't know until we try it. Or die! Or die trying. Indeed. This will be the first multiplayer crisis I've played in in like years. Well, let's see if the game makes it that far. Usually about this point it starts to freak out and lose our save. To a point where it's longer. Dang. we can do anything with. Ugh, oh, it's Friday. Yeah, it is.
I'd like a four day work week, but I admit fully that there's not enough time to do in a five day work week all the shit I need to get done. I don't know what that's indicative of, but. Damn. So I don't know if you guys have dealt with this, but uh, apparently DoorDash does not know what the fuck no contact means, because every time I order something from DoorDash, they ring the doorbell and wait there for me to come to the fucking door. And it's like, I've never no had that happen. Happen. That's so weird. But maybe you'll give them more money. I'll give them a fucking bullet in the ass. I've Whoa. only... I've only been face to face with one delivery driver in months and that was because they fucked up my order and I felt bad not tipping him when he had to drive back out. <laughs> Next time that this happens, I'm going to go to the door, open it, and be like, oh, 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 don't, don't Thank do that. you! They will get you in trouble, sir. You'll be in trouble after that. Well, it's supposed to be no contact, so why am I getting in trouble? It's no contact. That's you what can't it means. spread the pandemic. It's not allowed. <laughs> You can't get sued for infecting someone. They already put that law on the books. So. Yeah, but doing it. You can get shit. battery or assault for <laughs> coughing on people, though. All right. One of the two. Can't remember. Yeah, the it's not worth it. Well, I mean, like, no, people are doing it like intentionally. Obviously, you know, it freaks people out. It's you know, Where small, they're having COVID parties. It's small-scale terrorism. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's a thought to, to immunizing yourself forcibly, <laughs> um, but on the other hand, that really doesn't take into good caring about anybody else. Yeah, if if you're gonna go to a COVID party and then literally not leave your room for like a month, I mean, I guess you do you. <laughs> but I don't understand why people even think that is a good but idea. But the minute the Chicken minute you step everybody. outside your house after putting yourself in that party, you're now an asshole. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, I specified no contact. You come to the door and wait. I'm at right That is weird, though, because I've want. never had that happen. <laughs> are you sure? Are you, is it is it all different drivers? Yeah, it's like it's weird. So it's weird. even the grocery people, too. What? That's so fucked yeah. up. Yeah, even the grocery people, like, they just stand there and they wait for you to come to the door. And it's like, I'm just gonna start shooting you from my window. Like, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Matt, Matt, don't shoot anyone. Matt, shoot jump no to one. the extreme. That's it. I'm gonna uh, murder with, you. With, with bullets of love. With bullets of love. Oh, all of you on Twitch. With bullets uh, of love. Whenever what? I say I'm gonna shoot someone, it's only with bullets of love or semen. That's it. Oh, wow. That might get sexually explicit. <laughs> My girlfriend says that have you seen it. Whoa. Did everybody else hear the fire I did. that came out? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Matt, what are you doing? They're coming for you. I hear the bug inside of your uh, mic, man. Oh, I wish someone would pay attention to me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the FBI is listening to me? Awesome! Somebody find me. Tell them all my problems. Suddenly they hang up. <laughs> For those of you on Twitch that don't know, that's what uh, is referred to as blowing off steam. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. That's not allowed in uh, liberal America, okay? Doesn't seem very liberal, then. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Communist America doesn't care what you feel. Build the Galactic Shopping Center on Neptune. Actual Neptune, because I have the soul system. But you have the soul system. Nice. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and I'm not human. I found it. I know. Uh, so what about the humans? How are they doing? Uh, they got wiped out by the fanatic purifier because I did not get into them this time. Oh. Earth still habitable? 
It was a tomb world, but I uh, undid that, and now it's an alpine world. Nice. <laughs> Sounds about right. All right, Galactic Mall is a mod. Never mind. Uh, let's see what I'll build instead. Oh yeah, that all those points are turned. Oh shit! And I'm gonna I'm gonna force this through, I guess. <laughs> Didn't realize there's only 11 days left. Can't change my vote now. Eight days. The soulless will be tight. Damn, acquisition successful. Diplomatic weight from tech minus 40. Wow. What that's gonna yeah, do. it's pretty insane. <laughs> oh, that did knock me down a little bit. I was at like a hundred and something before this, but the... Omega's above you now. Yep. Omega's been above me for a little while now. Independent tribunals. Armageddon and indiscriminate bombardment stands using any class of weapons other than collective air fire or ban. I thought we already did this. Yeah, probably somebody repealed it. Sure hope that endgame pops soon. Did the end game pop and you guys just killed it? Is that what happened? No, it hasn't popped yet. There was a mid game, I think. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, the mid game was the L gate, wasn't it? And it just got quashed. I fought. Oh, Some we of have the power there was the... And world crackers are banned right now. We also have reference the great for con for the mid world. Uh, the great con is mid game. We have independent tribunals, which Armageddon and indiscriminate, uh, indiscriminate. Oh no, never mind. Okay, so they're they're putting up independent. So it's reference for life that I was thinking of, which is banning purging and world crackers. The so world crackers are already. And... Oh, I got a new I got a new policy on the floor. Hell yeah, I support the shit out of that. Uh, greater than ourselves. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, total of support of that. In fact, I'm yep, such No a... grid amalgamations for robots. <laughs> oh. Can't use... You Who can't can use his battery. measure this? I'm out of emergency <laughs> measures. I have to wait 1,000 days, 3,000 days. I have to wait 5,620 days before I can make another emergency measure. Somebody emergency measure that. Oh, uh, uh, deep state of it. Emergency measure that. I don't think we should, man. Deep state, that should, that should stand. I mean, it'll happen in 500. I really need them to move my unemployed people. I know exactly. Yeah, the last tier of the, this thing is really good. Yeah, this even works on drones, from my understanding. Like, uh, like my populations. So, I want balance in the middle because that's what gets really good. Oh, there was an emergency. Awesome. Oh. No one approaches it! <laughs> hey, who the fuck would have. Oh, somebody did oppose it. Ooh, two people. Assembly of Candor and uh, Corinthian. And. And Nexus. Nexus, oh. why are you. Uh, Uh, 
<laughs> what was that? Just for fun. Just for fun. Just to create a fight in the Senate, huh? Did you notice that we have been on opposite ends of almost every vote? <laughs> no. Prime Network, change your uh, stance to supremacy in policies and watch your uh, diplomatic weight skyrocket. Okay, fine. So, my diplomatic stance is currently cooperative. Change it to this. I don't know when this happened, but apparently mine is belligerent and I can't change it because I'm out of war. See, look! You're, you're looking how much your diplomatic weight went up! Holy crap. Yeah, that wasted me another 40k. Oh. Well, it's a fight in the Senate floor, that's for sure. Why don't you guys want this? This is so good. What if there's no negative? Oh, uh, let's see here. Oh, because of uh, slavery, huh? What? Slavery and grit. He wants to grit amalgamate everyone. That's what we're finding out. Uh, makes sense. I will not be his personal AAA battery. I'm just really excited to never have to resettle a population again. Like, this is the one that's, like, needed for all robots. From now on, I have to remember to, like, push as hard as possible. Yeah, this is the eliminate micromanagement one. Yeah, huge. Huge, 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 huge. As soon as I get this pass, though, I'm gonna switch my stuff back. Cooperative, because I am not a oriented empire. We are here to help with the, the end game crisis. We've exterminated all the other problems. When's the uh, Necroid uh, race expansion pack supposed to come out? Oh man, I can't wait for that to come out. Um, I'm not sure when it comes out, but oh, that looks so cool. Like it's it's gonna be portraits, and I believe it'll be different gameplay. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be fair, fair, fair. What, Matt? Oh, oh sorry, I said I said I'm sure that'll be fair and balanced when it comes out. Well, this game is not about balance. <laughs> no. Get that idea. But I wonder, it's definitely going to be portraits, it's definitely going to be a uh, ship uh, image. They definitely like showed that in the screenshot or yeah. the video. But I like, wonder like what, there'll be new civics, of course. But will there be something new on the wheel of ethics? I wonder. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what the hell is uh, playing a necromancer race? gonna be like in space like it's a little bit different it's gonna be like the chronicles of riddick you seen the chronicles of riddick oh yeah yeah chronicles of riddick i can see that interesting hmm. yeah i'm interested to see what what kind of uh, stuff they do it's, it took me like by surprise like completely by surprise did not expect them to come out with a necromancy uh, civilization type in this game. Not just a civilization type, an entire race that they're using. Like, like. 
So to, I'm guessing then you, like, can you become a necromancer race eventually? Like, can you just turn your people into necromancers? Or is it like, it, that's like how your civilization came about is by being necro? I'm, I'm really kind of confused as to like the whole concept behind it because I kind of get the idea that, you know, you, like you could become a necromancer race. Like, that'd be kind of cool. But I don't understand the concept of it being from like the very ground up and it's not something you can become, it's something that you are. I think it's gonna be more like 40k. Sorry, I got chicken in my mouth. I think it's gonna be more like 40k um, backgrounds than like things that became undead. They became undead like but eons ago. Right. So I think it's gonna be. Interesting. Yeah, I'm excited though to see what, what they've got for that. That looks really cool. Hopefully, they bring a new end game crisis with it. That'd be interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and there'll be new stories surrounding it. New, like, uh, beginning game scenarios, perhaps. New star? Alright. Star type. I wonder. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, just, I'm speculating, but yeah. Be cool. Omega, what kind of research you putting out these days? 16k, 5.2k physics, 6.5k society, and 5.1k engineering. Nice. How about you? Um, 10k physics, 9k social, 9k engineering. And that's just because of my stupid ring world science. That I have. I need, like, I need to build more ring worlds, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you want more science, yeah, it's the bread and butter of science is properly stationed orbital habitats and fucking okay, uh, ring, ring worlds. Is stupid. Like, it just is. So <laughs> but now I'm printing food on all of my planets because. I'm making a food ring world next to Seoul. Nice. And I've started naming my ring worlds after Halo installations. Will you need food? <laughs> Y'all need some of that food? No. I'm maxed out with food. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm making 1200 food a turn. I, I, cut, I, replaced, I replaced a bunch of my, my food generating stuff and I'm still at 600 a turn. Yeah, I need to cool mine down a little bit. We're not going hungry, that's for sure. I'm trying to find planets that are worth eliminating. Oh, that one's a good I found two candidates. Um, Why are you eliminating planets? Converting them into ring worlds, of course. That doesn't make them better than a planet. Oh yeah, it does. Wow. It eats them. I have to be very careful. Is there no limit to their resources? <laughs> Remember, I I uh, cheesed my way to get a second matter decompressor. So <laughs> that's right. Oh. Yes. A Titan could build a, another one, but that would be nah. I don't even I'm think I've finished mine. Let me shovel check. I did. No, I did not. <laughs> Let me finish that. <laughs> I'm making 5.3k minerals from megastructures. Overall, I'm making 5k Same. a month above, uh, but I'm maxed, so it doesn't matter. Well, I guess I'm gonna have more k. My food rings will be here soon. I get 1,000. 330 minerals for my matter decompressor right now. I haven't even fully upgraded it. Yeah, whatever. 
technical acquisition successful. Oh, I just want this end game to come. Can we speed it up? To see if it can be sped up. Uh, yeah, whatever. I did speed it up. Holy shit! Okay. Wow, Stellaris, you guys have done really well. I have to say. You remember when it would take forever for a day to go by when uh, it got past like the year 300? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and we were playing with mods in those times, too. We were playing with mods back then. But, even then, like, without mods still, I've played lots of multiplayer games with you without mods that came to a crawl, like, 350. Yeah, they've had challenges in optimizing their large games, and we always play in huge galaxies, too, which they yeah. weren't against. We're always pushing the limits. Yep. Well, if you can let us play in it, we'll play in it, though. <laughs> I, I don't know why, I always am always about more stars. Like, it just is because there's so many fucking stars in a galaxy. So why not? <laughs> more! Yeah, just, you know, the more, the more. I don't know what it is, but there's like just something inside of me that's like, no, I don't want to go small with this large size galaxy. It just is, <laughs> it does not appeal to me. Bigger is better. Always. These pirates are so dumb. Idiots. Brotherhood of the Void. Well, I'm about to send you there. Brotherhood of the War up north. I don't know. I haven't checked out it at all. <laughs> I just approved it. I, I, so assembly of camp door is like America for your uh, federation? Uh, I mean, no, more like England. But without the vassalization. <laughs> just pure conquering. Yeah. I'm like America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Matt's got the melting pot and... Uh, a lot of pot, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's nice. People like it. People like to not have, like, people like to have a place to live. The deep state. <laughs> you too could have a place to live in the deep state. Robots destroyed your kingdom? Come on down to the deep state. <laughs> Check out our new Ecumenopolis. <laughs> with 30% more taxes. Do you love big cities? Uh, Ecumenopolis, maybe for you. How many Ecumenopolises do you have? I have one. I only have it because I converted an old relic world. I don't have the tech for it. I have four. I You're an one. overachiever. <clears throat> I've got my... the potential to build three, though. I have like 60 or 70 machines. I had a whole system I just dedicated to being Yumacropolis. You're a Yumacropolis and you're a Yumacropolis. I lucked out and got a plan and had an auto for a janitor in the game. Nice. Do Economopolis give a research sector? No. To give alloys, right? And Alloys and consumer goods, and no, and well, mine gives amenities. Uh, amenities, yeah. All oh, right, sorry, culture workers. So much, and you don't even need those because the place is hopping. Her good time. It's Prince Clerks. Yep. Yeah. Well, and it's built on whatever the hell your capital was, or yeah, in this case, my capital was in the first place, which yep had a ton of folk and places. The only thing I don't like about Echinopolis is, is uh, creating them because you have to get rid of everything except for city districts. Well, it doesn't get rid of them. It takes that total and then starts you anew with you a set. You mean change the districts 
two city districts is it what you build otherwise? Yeah. Yeah, but but the value you got from what you built is retained. Oh yeah, for sure. So it's, you don't lose it. It's just building on top of it. No, it's just you, the manual task of having to go in and be like, okay, get rid of all these sectors. The only thing I can have on it is city district. So you gotta get rid of all the other districts before converting it. And then it's way worse, than it, but just as a manual pass. And something sure. that stopped me from being able to build it at first. I had no idea what the hell was going on. I was very confused as to like what I was supposed to do. So I kinda didn't believe it. I was like, what? I have to get rid of all these sectors? Or all these uh, districts? No, I only get rid of something else that can be changing and convert them. Once that resolution passes, all of my overpopulation and unemployment will vanish as they all go to the Ecumenopolis. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I might actually start back up the forges. Restart the forges. May awaken my empire. Oh, I can build an eighth titan now. Have it's we got rid of all the awakened empires? Uh, yep. I so. Yep. No more fallen empires. Yeah. Do we have any primitive? We do. There are three primitive nations in this galaxy. I heard there were some old I computers on Earth. <laughs> Relatives of yours. I came over to protect my border from the Canisian Empire and then my two allies, the Merovandians and the Kemper, just came in and crushed everything on the side of the map. <laughs> Good ally. In yeah, fact, I think they hold everything right now. What are you guys going to do about them Constantian Empire or whatever? Nothing. I think they're done. Yeah, they don't have any actual power. <laughs> they're done. They've been through some nasty shit lately. Oh, wait a minute, you guys are fighting them. I mean, they're probably friends with the motherfuckers. I, uh, do you need any help, Matt? I haven't even asked, I guess. I haven't done anything. It's the Camdor and the and the Miravandians crushed them. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, they just, uh, never mind, okay. I was wondering whether you guys were going to wipe them off uh, the map or not. Yep. Looks like the uh, Lavis commodity uh, or commonality is going to be one of the few that and Omega are going to but I think this will, the Lavis will be one of the few AI <laughs> independent empires that will survive. I like how this, uh, we, we have like a satellite moon uh, this reminds me of this is just a planet Earth and then a moon over here. Like, like you're playing a board game. Indeed. Now I kind of want to get like a planet Earth image and just have it like right behind the uh, galaxy <laughs> in a moon. You believe in the moon, bro? Oh, Wait, I don't believe the in the moon. The moon is a system of belief? <laughs> what? It is. How did you... What? what? Do you believe I... in the moon? Wow. Wait, what, what do I believe about the moon? That it exists. What? Real. If that... I mean, I refer to the thing I see as the moon. What do you call it? Well, I guess seeing is believing that. Fake well, I'm, news. I mean, it's not really news. I'm not getting it from like a television. It's just there. It's news from your eyes to your brain. Don't let it fool you. 
I'm just attacking your position like while offering you. You might nothing. think that it's something that you just see there, but really that's been indoctrinated into you for years. <laughs> okay. So that's what is that? What am I seeing? Well, you have you ever been like watched Star Trek? Uh, that well, you're suggesting the, this the is a common phenomenon, and, and that we're well aware of, of what the problem is and why I'm seeing what I'm seeing. So please explain <laughs> to me, in common terms, what this phenomenon is. That well, everyone I who to everyone who can actually answer that question is either in on it or dead. Yeah. But it's either your response is suspect. It's either a projection or just an image on the dome. Scientifically, it's more likely that the moon does not exist. Let me just explain to you that after you reach a certain level of education, you stop being able to truthfully understand the universe. You know, you know how you know that, that the moon is education? fake? Because the sun fits perfectly between the earth and the moon, and that's just too perfect for science. That doesn't work. Uh, yeah, 3PO's got the odds on that. Why doesn't that work for science? Because it's just too coincidental. I don't believe in no, coincidences, no, no, so I therefore mean, the, I don't believe in the moon. It works for science because science would observe it and write that down. And that's how we know what that would be. You <laughs> or science, they just make it up because you're all about the scienceism. I don't think so. <laughs> science is your religion. Science, science has been made up since the very beginning. It's a uh, distraction from... Uh, you know what? You know what they used to call science until people figured it out? Witchcraft. Alchemy. So then they had to change the name of it yeah. because everyone figured out it was bullshit. I mean, I, th I feel like <laughs> there's been times when, you know, science has made some wrong, you know, wrong moves. But, you know, like, they, they make a mistake, they note it, you know, and they don't let it happen again. Like, people don't drink mercury anymore. <laughs> And in like, syphilis. in like 50 years, they're going to be like, I can't believe those idiots thought the moon existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, like, science, science also has a hard time has a hard time admitting when it's wrong. No, it has I a mean, hard time admitting when it's been wrong for like 500 years sometimes. I they're like, oh, I, by the way, that was wrong. 500 years later. it accepts later. that it's wrong. I just think it accepts no responsibility about it. <laughs> you know, like they'll just be like, well, did, speaking of trippy science... Did you guys see that uh, some quantum physicist uh, came up with, like, proof that time travel could exist without, uh, what do you call them? Um, can't think of the word right now. Ninjas. Conflicts between, you know, changes and stuff. Yep. Time travel can exist without paradox because, according to some type of math that they use to confirm it that has to do with like quantum entanglement across long distances and shit apparently you would be able to like have free will to an extent but time will always correct itself around the larger events according to math figure that shit out <laughs> <laughs> so actually time travel like that is possible because wherever you go into the past or into the future <clears throat> or well especially the past you go into the past you don't actually go to our past. You land there, but the second that you get there and change something, it breaks. But what they're saying is that's not universe. true. They're saying that they're well. They're saying that it would be possible to have time travel where that doesn't happen. You stay within the same, but you can change little things, but it won't have like a butterfly effect, basically, and the the grand direction of the world will continue on like you didn't change anything. Because of what? Because of God's plan? Is science saying that God No, it's something to do with quantum entanglement. I don't just know. Just do with God, just do to us, man. Interesting. So it's basically they came up the with a theory that the opposite to... of the butterfly effect. The butterfly exactly. effect. Exactly. They came up with a with a like a math provable theory according to them that time travel without the butterfly effect is possible. Well yeah, don't ever don't ever reach for anything. <laughs> Don't ever reach for anything in your life because they're saying that predestination exists. So anything that you do, it doesn't really matter. Not necessarily. They're saying well, no. if that you depends reach, on that's if you. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So if the first time that it happens, and this is all from the perspective of a three-dimensional being, so this all gets kind of weird, because is there really a first time, or is it all happening at once, and we just perceive it as a stream? But either way. The first time something happens, it sets the pattern, essentially, is what they're saying. And then if you go back, that pattern is set, and small details can be changed, but the, f the grand flow of it can't. 
it's, it's weird how they come out with all this weird shit after the quarantine. Like after the quarantine <laughs> began, they're like, "Oh, by the way, aliens is real." Here's the right. Oh, by there's the way, there's life on Venus. There's lakes on Mars. You can time travel without the butterfly effect, and there might be a black hole or a ninth planet actually around the solar system. Wait, they're well, the it's black 2020, hole. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Where, wait, I have to look this black hole thing up. Uh, you're so for to... years, for years, it was actually a joke that I loved following these theories about like Nibiru or Planet X and how there was this planet that was responsible for like discrepancies in gravitational measurements and stuff within the solar system. The and it was like not it, a joke. it was like made fun of as this like fringe conspiracy theory. And now all of a sudden within the last few years, scientists are like, oh, hey, there might be another planet out there or a miniature black hole <laughs> yeah they looked at the shape of the solar system and how everything moves and they said like there has to be some other big object in order for everything but to that's what the conspiracy theorists have been saying for years and everyone laughed at them so for once i feel like they're kind of vindicated <laughs> nobody thought a pandemic all was conspiracy happen either, so. theorists ever are now vindicated well no those Maybe. specific conspiracy theorists <laughs> No base thought the pandemic was going to happen. They said it like three years ago. I mean, why wouldn't they say, like, oh, we found a planet that swings vertically instead of horizontally. How cool is that? People would love that shit. They're releasing UFO footage from airplanes. And... Yeah. I mean, people would love that, though. No, they wouldn't be freaked out. They'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah aliens. We've been dreaming about aliens for a fucking hundred years. My internal in mind. System, <laughs> in our solar system's mysterious planet nine, really a grapefruit-sized black hole. Grapefruit? It probably isn't a black hole, but if it exists at all. But two physicists think we should check to see if it's a black hole, anyways. <laughs> Jeez, fuck. <laughs> No, we don't want a black hole outside of our fucking solar system in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't matter how big or tiny, it doesn't matter. Like, no, I don't want black holes near a goddamn planet. Remember, remember when all the conspiracy theorists were worried about CERN and how it was yeah. gonna, like, open up, like, a black hole or, like, an interdimensional portal and, like, catapult <gasps> us into some tragedy? What if that's what happened? <laughs> or, like, turn the world inside out. Yeah. I mean, it was gonna erode the fabric of space-time. Yes. Yeah, but we wouldn't notice. <laughs> Mandela effect. Mandela effect. Well, actually, Air I'm pretty bear. sure that the, uh, that the, the hydrogen collider created Trump. Like... Trump didn't exist in the universe until that thing was turned on, and then all of a sudden he, he he became part of the universe, and now it's like just breaking everything. I remember Trump from when I was a kid. Also, he's like 74. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying that he wasn't born, uh, it, like or that he was that he's not his age. I'm saying he didn't exist at all, and then Logical. the hydrogen collider was turned on. And all of a sudden, that's when he <laughs> entered reality, and therefore he was born 70 whatever years ago or whatever. But like, there is a reality out there where Trump never existed, and the hydrogen collider never was turned on. He killed all 70 of the other Trumps, just like in the one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like it. I like. First where of you're all, going. I think it's called the Hadron, like large the movie, Hadron. Hi, yeah, the large Hadron Collider. The Hadron. movie is called The Trump. Not to be confused with the small or medium size or jumbo Hadron Collider. All I'm saying is, as of like 2015, all of a sudden they're talking about pentaquarks and the God Particle. They broke shit. <laughs> well but you know like we keep finding boundaries you're not supposed to dissect the simulation that far you know but we found <laughs> we found you can also split atoms which is neat and it's just you know oh, yeah, why they gotta be called why they gotta be called atoms why can't why they, they be called eaves? eaves yeah uh, because it's, it's not that's not because when you say you're Adam, eaves, that's people why. get a little different <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right. I find I find atoms to be offensive. I think that they should be referred to as eaves from now on. But it's not even <laughs> atom. It, I wanna I want you to write up a uh, a uh, like a pr 
proposal for that and submit it to some kind of international science board. Oh, by that you mean Reddit, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. R slash science, hello. Yeah, it's H-chan. like the most respected science hub online. Oh my god, I got a better another one for you guys. world. I got a better one for you guys. 9chan. 9chan. Oh god, but how? What's even there? Channel 9 News. A lot of lonely, lonely people. <laughs> no doubt. You know, I don't think I've watched local news in like 10 years. Alright, I've never heard this story. Did you guys ever hear about Pope Francis talking about baptizing aliens? What? Yes, I did. Uh, in 2014, aliens. he said he would baptize aliens if they asked. Oh. He did not want to close the doors to green Martians with long noses and big yeah, ears. Well, that's and smart. in 2010, a papal astronomer also said he would baptize aliens if they asked. He said any entity, no matter how many tentacles it has, has a soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Basically, nice. he was trying to dispel that myth that like the church is anti-alien Yo, or actually, anti-science. And that is pretty... Uh, from my understanding, the church used to be really into the concept of other humans being on other planets and stuff like that, like that there are humans out there, and like that, like God had created tons of other things for us, like our universe. And Wouldn't that be crazy though? If this universe was really like a Star Trek universe, like oh, Vulcans, guys have plenty ears. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like for real, you do? Like elves? Yeah, and they would, still, and they would like, roll their eyes. Other than that, they're human. Yeah. <laughs> So on uh, Star Trek Dis- Discovery, there's a Vulcan who looks just like Elrond, and his name <laughs> is Elrod. Oh, jeez. No you plagiarism. They know each other. Are they friends? They're dressed the same. Does that make them friends? They both have bows. Uh, I don't no, see a bow Elrond on one. is a sword guy. Elrond's got a, f- a phaser, probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A lightsaber. No. No. We all know that uh, L. Ron Hubbard actually wrote The Lord of the Rings. L. Ron <laughs> Hubbard. <laughs> I don't think so. He wasn't he born. Put his fa- he put his own name in the, the book. Elves are such racists. And they know the way to live forever. And they got this no, weird the, religion that nobody understands. The elves, <laughs> the elves are racist. Yeah. Because there are races. Because <laughs> there are real races in this. And they have caused serious <laughs> harm to each other in times of... <laughs> in times I think it's got bad prodigy. because your skin colors are different. That's why you guys fight with each other. That's so I've fucking always... stupid. Look at the orcs and look at us. Like, we're different, okay? I've always That's been curious we're... about, like, the idea that there's, like, young elves that don't know all the cool shit that they know after hundreds of years that are out there just trying to, like, scam people into believing they're old. It's like an adventure at first level. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> Matt, your your uh your headset keeps making weird robot noises. It goes What's so weird pretty... about it? Well it, if we it's... all imitate it at once it might sound close. <laughs> 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 yes. It makes like some kind of ee sound. Your microphone is reeing. This goes weird. I'm pretty yeah, it's sure like it's the bug that the FBI put in it, but it's I like might just be the wires on the. Uh... Sorry, guys. No, it's, it's like, yeah. I don't know. It seems like some kind of like lag-induced weirdness. I'm gonna plug the receiver back in. That might help. Oh, 18 years. We should definitely have an endgame crisis. Like, cool. Bring it on. Currently, Nexus is at the top. Prime 
network right behind him, and Omega, and then we have Cam Yarn, uh, Macaroon, Unity, the Quadarian Star Machine, the State. I think that's all of us. Is this better? Yeah, I think so. Sounds normal, and you're not, you didn't re up that time. So. <laughs> yeah, I heard no re. I know you all want to hear my dulcet tones. There we go. No, I want to hear your voice because it is really distracting when all of a sudden you're talking about something and they go. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I forget I'm talking to humans. You know, sometimes I just want to speak in binary because it's faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were you were faxing us the information. Okay. Yes, yes I prefer to communicate in the several wavelengths of light. <laughs> Wow, you guys, uh, we all, we all did very good. Conquer Galaxy. The only, the only AI that is even competing with the humans was one of the humans. So. Yeah, he straightened them right out. Yeah, the assembly of Camp Door. And then logged off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they just fucked everything back up again immediately, but apparently that yeah. short time doing well how it is. I'm thinking about messing with these uh, xenophobic isolationists right above me. Just for fun. Oh yeah. Yeah, go conquer them. Who's that? The, uh, I'm replacing the dead leader. Holy Democratic me. son. Cap. Oh, I thought you meant the Codarian star machine. Whoa. <laughs> now the uh yeah like half of that democratic sons oh those guys in the corner yeah they're they're quiet yeah they just kind of keep to themselves they don't really have much of a navy either half of that what a weird name Seth Seth of that I don't know yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe Saf, Saf Havad, or, Safavad, or Cap <laughs> Kafavad, or Cap Havad. Or... I think I call them the Democratic Sons. The Cap, the Cap Sons, yeah, Cap um, sons. the Capri Sons Capri. up here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cap Gemini. <laughs> oh no! At least we know that they won't respond to my attack for any reasonable <laughs> amount of time. Sorry to the three million people out there that work for them. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Anyway, the universe. One leader's leader. dying. Anyone got a cure for that? Robot leaders. Independent tribunal, huh? I don't think that'll do it. Genetic modification. Yeah. How are we feeling about this uh, independent tribunal, people? Like I think yeah. Need I'm against state. it. Against it. Looks like coders for it. Yeah, right. Because it says no Armageddon. That's good. <laughs> no indiscriminate bombing. Okay, I'll, you know what? I'll drop my indiscriminate bomb. And you can't use any Colossus weapons other than the global pacifier. That's, that seems legit. And then, uh, diplomatic weight from fleet power, that's going to be the biggest hit to people who actually don't want this, I think. Right? Oh. And then there's, uh, yeah, minus 60%. Oh, goodness. Yeah, it's minus 60%. That's ridiculous. Yeah, minus 60% fleet power, that knocks me, uh, Omega, and, uh, uh, Nexus down a notch. Huge chunk Come from uh, but then there's also army upkeep is more but you get better defense armies also by that same amount uh, you, you know, war exhaustion goes down by 10% uh, or the gain amount goes down by 10% and then uh, collateral damage by armies increased by 20% as well uh, you can still have war, war. Yeah. it's just cleaner war for a better galaxy. <laughs> that sounds incredibly propaganda at least. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, 
just imagining, like, as soon as this passes, like, all three of the top galactic powers lose half of their fucking influence, which is not gonna hurt us. Holy shit, Omega just, like, yeah. doubled his, uh, like, more than doubled his, uh, galactic influence since the beginning of this game. I'm ramping up. My fleets are growing. Anyone have 9k of metal that they want to loan me and quote? Yeah, I got you. Hang tight. Oh. Matter decompressor. Boring. Refugees! I thought the people were supposed to go on their own to places where there's work now. If you enable the edict. Oh yeah. Damn it! Drone override. Our drones will work harder and have required greater, greater than, than ourselves. ourselves. There. Yes. Fuck yeah, trick you bitch on. Damn. Ooh. I am now 75% uh, decrease to my empire capacity due to edicts. <laughs> empire sprawl impact 75% increase. <laughs> Brawlish, brawlish. Yes, Thank you. Indeed. Turn the edict down, and I still have a bunch of unemployed. <laughs> well, I didn't have a bunch of unemployed. Yeah. So, but if they have open jobs to get rid of open employment. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> Otherwise, you're doing the Trump is going. Uh, oh yeah, there's jobs. Uh, maybe not. But look at my energy credits. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I pushed myself over my military cap. Died at the age of 140. I'm uh, maxed out on that, Matt. No, thank you. He returned all the Fanta we made. <laughs> Alas, my Fanta cooler could contain no more Fanta. Yep, we need balance in the middle. What does that do for us? 
lowers admin cap costs and population housing usage. Also bans academic privilege and uh, decent conditions. Ooh, academic privilege, wow. Yeah. That was something that could get banned. You're not allowed privilege. Which basically leaves living standards of you have to use a uh, a better living, it's like social welfare or something like that. Are you Utopia Abundance? Yeah, I'm Utopia Abundance. Utopia Abundance. Okay, that's You can take social welfare as any race, which is unemployed props reduce unity instead. Yeah. But unity and science. And it no is. happiness penalty. Well, that's the same with the other one. Oh, social welfare is no, uh... Yeah. So, egalitarian has a bonus, but it's not... Yeah, it's overwhelming. a... Overwhelming. It's a happiness bonus, and... That's it, isn't it? It's a happiness bonus, and... Research. Research. But still, happiness. Oh shit, it's the Catan game, dude. Oh, is it? Looks like it. I must have knocked away a little bit. Didn't even notice. And independent tribunals? Yeah. I'm already voting yes on it. I know. But we can They're trying to vote together. against it. You don't need my vote. I, I need your favors. No. Really? Really? For what? I'm gonna put it towards my power. To the support. That's what you do with favors. Yeah. It costs and influence. you should. Like that's the. But you shouldn't. Uh, but you shouldn't leverage me to do it. You should just do it. What, <laughs> what do you mean? I have to use somebody else's favors. I can't. I, I, I need to use favors in order to. Kind of. Never mind. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Whatever. 
We don't need I mean, can't you just... When you so use someone's I, what fingers, I'm trying doesn't to do it take right away from them? My power. It doesn't take away anything from anybody. All it does is it just adds to your power. It costs influence. It's the, the offset of the, the thing about it. it huh. it's, it's basically free extra. Oh. Yeah. Basically, no, I don't if think we work that together, we can boost our things together if we use influence and trade and trade favors. But don't worry about it. We don't need to pass this vote. I will the galaxy go back is to vehemently it. opposed. Yeah. I was just trying to pass it. No need to. We don't, we don't want tribunals in these parts. Death the tribunals. This district exists for two reasons. Producing food. And producing admin cap. Yeah, not bad. And so we'll go through another at least 60 minutes plus, so we'll have 120 months that we'll be playing, so we'll either just be at the very beginning or probably the very end. In your monologue. It's all good.
Oh, I really wish I could trade you guys shards and uh, Woe TV. If only. I have so many shards for people that I'm not ever going to use. <laughs> That's a lot of shards. Yeah, I'm really happy with my lineup that I got right now. I feel like I'm rapidly improving, but rapidly Im improving among the rapidly improving. So I haven't changed much. <laughs> well, I don't care about the PvP aspect of it. I'm just, uh, like, everything is becoming so much easier now. Like, I was able to, like, do all, of, like, all the new missions now. I can complete all of the, like, you know, beat it without getting KO'd. Everybody, you know, complete all missions at once, get all the, you know, rainbows and stuff. A couple months ago, I was having to skip some missions, being like, ah, I can't get that rainbow crystal, it's just impossible for me to knock out three without getting <laughs> KO'd. And now it's like, bam, bam. Time steal, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, I just I haven't been able to spend the time, sadly. Yeah, a lot of the late one is kind of nice because all you have to do is that one mission just over and over and over. Boss is the one that takes a, a two-headed dragon. It's a nasty one. Uh, but you can just do that one mission over and over again. You get all the points that you need, and then someday try and do the 50 fucking points you have to fight that fucking dragon over and get those medals. Only took me five fights because I uh, manually handled it, and I had my ninjas stay far away and just chuck shurikens at them. It took me two in the beginning, but I just refined my team a little bit more, and now I can, I, I was able to beat them in, in one go without a problem. I was able to beat a, a Frit as well with my shadow team, but I had to bring in, uh, had to take out Gap because he just wasn't able to tank anything. Yeah, he can't uh, take shit. So I, I mean, you, you can make him tougher, but you do have to you have to make it so he, his attack is just gone. You know, he's regular. I, but then with I just, even points, with him so bumped all the way out with stuff. everything I could do for magic defense for him, it just wasn't enough. So I um, switched over to switching him out with a real tank with a, with a Miranda, and Miranda just came in and was like, "What? There's fire on me." <laughs> fire. <laughs> I just unlocked him for the sword. Who is that? Oh, Gaff? Yeah, Gaff's sword is kind of cool. It's good. Although I have a couple plus five mags right now. Those are very good. And that, uh, fucking, uh, the sword, the UR sword that we got recently. I got that. Uh, rain sword, I have maxed all the way and I just got rain, so I'm super excited. Though. Oh yeah, I just pulled rain too. Yeah. I'm not gonna do anything with him. I've got Delita fire guy up to level 5. or maxed out, so... Yeah, Delita and him are very close to each other. Um, I've been seeing some people not... They're preferring rain and having multiple rains and maybe one Delita, uh, because rain has the multi-hit attack, three hit attack that he can do. So, he can get yeah, multi-hit's good. Yeah, the, the mult for uh, raids and stuff like that, people prefer raid, uh, so I'm not too sad that I lost out on Delita. I'll get him eventually. Delita's cool, you just gotta make sure you turn off his stone throw ability. It's garbage. Yeah, I turn all that shit off. Although Gaff's uh, stone throw is not unbelievably horrible. Well, it's random is the problem with it. You can't count on it. Well, the no, the well, the stone throw with him actually like the problem. The biggest problem with stone throw is it's a low damage attack. Um, but when you have 1,000 attack power, um, 
you know. But but it's still unreliable. It's it's a it's a big range of how much damage it might do. It's, it's still. I mean, I don't think it. it I didn't believe it was a huge range that it had. I thought it was still. It's a huge damage. range. I think it's a huge range. That's my experience. I could be wrong. I'm pretty That's sure that there is no range. Like there is, there's crit range. Um, so there's, depending on what kind of crit setup that you have, uh, there'll be a huge Oh, range sure. How much but no, I just mean, I feel like without critting, I've seen Stone Throw do like a ton of damage and a little damage. Uh, and I haven't correlated that throw Absolutely. But, uh, Mont. Like Mont. Mont always throws shit. Um, no, but I mean, that's what I'm saying, is I see Mont throw not shit. Oh, Surprisingly, oh, oh, I'm like, depending what the on fuck? who he throws it at, absolutely. Like, because it's piercing damage, so if the target is weak to piercing, let's say they have 15%, you know, uh, added damage for piercing attack, and they're uh, lightning instead of, you know, against him, he's going to do, like, an extra 30-40% extra damage on that. Uh, but when he throws it against something that's, uh, let's see, Thing that just a wind. So if he goes up against a wind unit and throws it at a wind unit, wind unit's gonna be like flood. And usually they have piercing attack up, uh, so they're defensive against pierce or against not pierce uh, missile. Uh, and then and then they're defensive against him. So that's that's where you'll get the range. But the, if you go and you attack the same unit over and over again with that um, thing, it'll it'll always tell you the same exact because um, they don't have range damage except for crit. Like when it tells you how much it's gonna do this, how much it's gonna do unless it crits. Huh. They have a very static framework. Unless there's other things that come into it. Uh, guard and you know other kind of activated abilities that happen after you attack and definitely reduce that damage as well. The deep stage shut me down. Oh no. What? All I wanted to do was help these guys see that they're not needed in the galaxy anymore. Oh. Throw it up again and I'll go for it. I thought it was just those hammerhead shark people trying to cause war. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna finish letting my ship upgrade anyway. Oh, that's what I was Not that I need it. They've got what? Like, at max 20k? I don't even think they have that. So tiny. Yeah, they've got like 12k. Entered the orbit of velocity with no warning or explanation. Oh no, that's just the uh, thing scanning planets. Oh. With enigmatic cache. Yep.
All right, I think I've finally taken care of every single planet. <laughs> so far now. There isn't one that needs anything. Ah, it's only taken two hours. Exactly. Especially people named that, right? Having that last name or band, the council has spoken. <laughs> so I like the name Hitler. Exactly. That's band two. The deep state frowns at that. Just ask them. They'll tell you. Don't know anyone named Hitler. Who's one that I I knock? What? What? Oh no, I didn't say that. Who are you? Someone really named that? Chris. Really? Are, are we all forgetting David Lynch? <laughs> oh, they're talking about Hitler. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, you're still on the Lynch. <laughs> wow. No, not Hitler. No, there's no Hitlers. <laughs> Hitler's. <laughs> Out of Chris style. Hitler. I mean, there are people with the last there's, name. There's Hitler, actually a, a documentary weird. that's pretty interesting about the hidden Hitlers in America, and like, they the, they find the people that were related or are supposedly like suspected to be related, but change their name, and then the ones that weren't related and still have the name, and just like did a documentary on living in the U.S. with the name Hitler. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, Lynch. It's a kind of common last name. Amazon sure is making some great stuff these days, huh? Amazon what? Amazon's making great things. Lynchings. No. I 
Allegedly, right. Twitch. Allegedly. Allegedly. Actually, yeah, don't piss off Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Literally streaming on Twitch. <laughs> it's probably Amazon detected. It's like every time the word Amazon is set up. Flag it, take a look. Right, either make a commercial or a lawsuit out of it. <laughs> yeah. Amazon cancels your Prime membership. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your patronage. Now get out. Still gonna charge you. Well, you signed an agreement digitally. Order restored to the core. I'm a sovereign citizen. One look at the galaxy and it was like, nope. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, we're gonna have to hold off the invasion. <laughs> we haven't built our forces up, and apparently they have. Eventually, sir, there will be an end date that we have to invade. I know. Watch, they start pouring through with like 3.5 million fleet. <laughs> I don't think that'll be. It'll be that bad. I think it'll be bad enough. I think we, I think we could kill that. Yeah, we might be able to kill that. Well, if it was multiple 3.5 fleets, uh, all throughout the galaxy, you know, but uh, that would be rough. One. Would be, usually, that game crisis is a shit ton. Of I think they are usually like half a million. Depending on what crisis we get. If it's the AI crisis, we're all gonna be in the AI. There are zero robots in my empire. No, it's the fact that it's like all over the galaxy that they spawn. They can appear in four different spots instead of just one. I think this is only a problem for heathen robots. I'm not worried about <laughs> it in the sense that I'm a robot. I'm more worried about it in the sense that it'll be in my space. Therefore, something I actually have to be And I can't go help out somebody else. So let's say I get one, you get one, and uh, you know, Nexus gets one. Well, then the fourth one that spawns over by those guys, they're going to have to deal with it all by themselves. True. Completely preoccupied. It's the only one I think that could actually cause us to you know, lose some space. We have to think about a strategy how to fight it. I think if it uh, is one of the ones where it all concentrates at one area at the very beginning, I'm pretty sure we can just crush it before it becomes a nuisance. Can robots be spiritualists? Nope. Uh, technically, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. You can transform yourself into a robot empire and be spiritualist, yes. But then you make know. your people a little unhappy. Yeah. Oh. You still have to deal with happiness and concepts of that. And you're they become very faction. displeased with you. Your faction was like, what were our leaders thinking when they decided they were going to import us and purge us of our souls? Yeah, I'm sure there's some kind of huge penalty in there. Most, most empires that achieve that are the opposite, so we're not spiritual.
what that means. No. What are we voting on now? Military readiness. I'm not hurt by this, but, but we do have the end game crisis coming, so I do think we all need to have our fleet full capacity if you guys can do that. So, anybody struggling to do so at this point? Uh, gonna need to reorganize our priorities as end game crisis. <laughs> we have 12 years left, and we might have one year. In before we realized that it's going to be another hundred years. Where I put my juggernaut yard. <laughs> I had to build the whole yard, even though my empire can only support one juggernaut. <laughs> Maybe you can put rockets on that and make it a juggernaut too. Maybe I can give it a special helmet and a crystal and make it the real juggernaut. Yep. Yes. Yes. That's how that works. Very, very important for me to do so. acquisition successful. My leader that had the chosen one trait, she's gone. Oh no. But she's a deep sick took him. Is that why I have this unemployed ruler on this planet? <laughs> really? Can rulers ever be truly unemployed? 
No, not really. But I have, I do have unemployed rulers from other from other countries who never <laughs> seem to be able to find a job here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking layabouts. I was once the ruler of the entire planet. Yeah, that little pricky, <laughs> that little pricky tea guy, the little like frog-looking people. Oh god, yeah. that's one of them. He just has been sitting on this one planet for like a hundred years. <laughs> I refuse to change my station. I am a ruler. I don't care if there are no rulers in your land. It is, and it will be my job. But like your empire fell fifty years ago. <laughs> but one day they want to. Or empire. What? It's imperial. Only the Hazadi can hold the station. Oh shit. She completely disappeared. I don't know what happened to her. She didn't die. Did she ascend? I think she can. Are you sure that's not your addiction? No, that's my cat. <laughs> like she just wants to go outside all the time. Yeah. It's outside for the kitty. Uh, smell. Whatever she can find that can be huntable. Or just Yes. Is she spayed? Yeah, she's spayed. Still going through something. Sure. Yeah, that, that's a kitty. Very friendly now, though, which is kind of nice. Very, very talkative. Trouble. That's good, though. I forgot all about it. I don't even know what they're doing up there. Honestly, it's been a long time. 
60% war exhaustion, the enemy, 35% us, I guess. Guess. So you guys have everything captured, it's just a matter of taking the planet, probably. That could be. I sent uh, Chuck a text and was like, hey, maybe you should show up next week. When the new game starts, no response. No. He should show up next week to play his Civ when it finally takes over the rest of the galaxy. <laughs> yeah, Camdor's doing good. Yeah, totally. So we might, might be... We might have to wait one more. Yeah, it's good to have an interval, just so we can, like, tell people and get them. Well, I mean, next week, we'll still probably be Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think so. And I think that will be the last week. Except that last week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we had hoped that. I had thought True. that the end game would have already popped by now, and I got super sad that Ten years away from when it has to pop. Like usually it pops like the first 25 years. It like keeps on ramping up every year. It gets closer to the 50 year mark. Right, it's got less random numbers to bounce around in. <laughs> Did we set the end game crisis to spawn in 2050? Oh, we moved it up 100 years each. Okay, well. That being said, pretty much by the time that this, uh. at the very end of our session. You guys are sure about the, the years and stuff calculations? I know for sure that the end game year is 26, uh, 2600, so... Because if you go into the situation log, the victory, it says uh, on January 1st, 26, uh, 2600, uh, next Just as he planned it. Wah, wah, wah. Yes, I've been planning to win all along. <laughs> <laughs> That's been my game. Winning. Well, well done. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Yet. It's a bold strategy. Bold Winning. Strategy. Indeed. I collected zero relics this game. <sighs> Me too. Me too. I have three. I see that. Nice. I, I have 17. What? what? That can't be. How? 1700, I'm sorry. <laughs> Always talking about a score, not how many relics he's collected. <laughs> Every point is a relic. Oh, what do I need to build? Everything. Ships. Always more ships. What is the bloody holdup on this war down here? They can play it, apparently. Yeah, the, uh, AI the is not doing it or something? I don't know. It could be also that uh, what's happening is that two wars are happening at the same time. Uh, both AIs are in control of it, so they're both not going to stop until war uh, exhausted. Uh, and what's happening is they can't they can't uh, decisively win the war because the other one is kind of be 
being won by the other party. So it's like there's three people fighting, and because uh, two of them are beating the shit out of the one guy so bad, they can't agree with each other that they won. <laughs> Not getting beat up. Um, yeah, so basically it's just gonna take a hundred years before that war is over now. Although it looks like our guys have all of the enemy space, so I think actually, well, that could be a possibility. I think it's actually more like what you guys were saying originally with planets. Uh, there is one system yeah, one that is specifics. owned by this guy. Uh, but yeah, it looks like everything else is owned by... Yeah. Oh, two. There's one. Two, three. Three of them. Okay. He's got Fancor, yep. Malcrop, okay. and Sifix. Those are your home ups, then. So you can't decisively win the war until you take those. Yeah, so, and I think it's a full conquer. So we probably have to declare war on these assholes. Too. Yeah, basically you're gonna have to declare war on the. Um, oh, I gotta make sure my claims are up to date. Then you might as well declare war on the sun then too. What? No. What? I'll just declare war on people. Well, the unity was just gonna because. Take out, uh, the sun. <laughs> Oh, I mean, they can propose Yeah, I, I, I really want to, but I feel like as soon as I do it, the endgame crisis is going to happen. Good, do it! <laughs> <laughs> Something to make it happen, damn it. Endgame crisis be like, and they're divided. Now to make our power play. Yeah, if we have to declare war on each other. The Christ is too afraid. Well, I put a war deck out there. You guys want to agree to it? For the purple dudes, the Sanjathan Kumbazirant. Yeah, to force them to. Because if you go conquer them completely, they'll just uh, die off and then be able to take the systems that they're claiming. We wish to a volcano marriage. has erupted. Volcano. Volcano war, same thing, right? Yeah. Kano wins. <laughs> Kano. Liu Kang. Scorpion. Did you hear me speak? Soldier Blade. Raided. From to ear to ear. <laughs> Kung Lao, Reptile, Smoke, Oops, I bet. Well, I don't want to play Mortal Kombat. I used to love Smoke. Yeah. Smoke used to be cool, now it's not Smoke. Reptile is cool. Reptile is pretty sweet. I was always a big fan of Sub Zero uh, for the video game. Yeah. Loved freezing people. Shujinko. It's one of the reasons why I picked my pro follow name. Oh. It's an origin story. <laughs> Kids used to call me Mr. Glass. <laughs> <laughs> Cause my bones is like glass. I am kind of happy that I did have the weird '90s experience of being able to go to an arcade and uh, play with a bunch of people on a, uh, you know, uh, one of the arcade machines and just be one of those people that could just sit at the arcade machine while people came up and challenged you over and over again. Dude, I used to do that with DDR. No, oh, yeah. Street Fighter, any kind of Street Fighter. We would post up at Summerfest at the Dance Dance Revolution and just 
get people to pay for our games all day by beating them. <laughs> so I went back to go play Mortal Kombat at uh, the local arcade uh, bar that we have here in Madison, and I suck now. <laughs> <laughs> they also move, like, very weirdly, like, just not as responsive or as a kid, yeah. I must have just been able to adapt to what, you know, just, that was perfect because it let me get all my moves in and get everything, but now I'm like, this is not, like, fluid, like, this is really jerky and janky. Did, uh, did you guys hear that there's a possibility of a, uh, Hacker's sequel? What? what? Yeah. I'm gonna hack the Gibson. Uh, yeah, I'm still gonna get the same actors. I'm I'm really worried because I feel like a lot of the appeal, looking back at hackers, is kind of their like naive optimism about technology in the future, and I feel like they won't be able to do that again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, well, that's I mean, the thing is that made hackers such a great movie for me personally is that it's got it's it's got the '90s hacker yep. feel to it. Like it just was before hacking was like this, like extremely benevolent thing that just ev- everybody was being ha- you know like nowadays it's just, you're not getting it's not hackers it's just malware and fucking all this other shit to like do all Bots. this other stuff like there's no like hacking that's really talked about these days it's all this malicious horrible shit happening um, but back in the 90s I feel like you know it was it, it was it was kind of more punk than it was like burn down the entire fucking universe I feel like uh, the problem the problem with the original movie is that none of the hacking was really real. I'm going to stop you right there. There is no problem with the original movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing about, uh, the thing about the hacking is that um, it wasn't real, but it was meant to be. It wasn't meant to be real. It was meant to be visually. Half that stuff is why I love it. Like, when they boot up her laptop in the dark and it projects the image on their faces. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> symbolic. Like, I, I was I was playing around with the idea of building, uh, of buying, like, a 95 Apple PowerBook and, like, gutting it and using the frame to build, like, a new laptop with a Pi or something within it. Um, and one of the parts that we were going to do with it was actually putting in, they have these little like mini projectors that came out for some LG phones that you can mod really easy and we were going to put one in the, the top frame so that it would project the desktop screen on your face like it did in the movie. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to pass on the really obvious money grab. <laughs> Hey man, they had some big name actors in there. That's why they had to have some money. They had what? Angelina Jolie. Um, That's it. That's uh, the only big what? name. No. <laughs> what? Uh, serial killer. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, they had Matthew Lillard. Um, Has he been in a movie in like 15 fucking years? Wow. Matthew Lillard's still doing a bunch. Yeah. I mean, he's like definitely like, not as thing? popular, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the last thing that I can think of. Who that cares? I really did was the What's wrong with Matthew show. Lillard? He was basically making all his money as Shaggy on the Scooby Doo show. Like he was doing the cartoon and movie for the past like decade. Yeah, at first I understand it. It's not about him. Like I'm not. I'm not thinking that he needs to be an actor all the time and be this great, like perfect actor. What I'm saying. Is, He's a good actor, and during his heyday, which is the, the time period that this is in, he was great at what he did. Uh, Plus, you had Pen. <laughs> oh yeah, you did have. Can't pen. forget Pen. <laughs> yep, you had Pen. Um, who else in that? Movie? There really wasn't anyone else. <laughs> Razor and Blade. <laughs> what was exactly. that? Exactly. Razor, Razor and Blade. Blade. Razor Blade. <laughs> Nikon. Nikon. Lord Nikon. Lord Nikon. Don't deny him his title. Lord. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I am sorry. He's leap, bro. Long hey, live, Lord all Nikon. I'm saying is that hackers is good enough for all of us to understand what we just said, even though it was a bunch of 
random word. Is that a 28 BPS moment? I'm not exaggerating when I say I watch that movie like twice a year. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Completely. Love it. Recently if bought it. In, if you've ever been in a chat room and actually seen someone type in Leet, I yes. just want to like reach oh, the yeah. computer and rip their oh, yeah. Out. Dude, that was, that was half the fun of... I, I had the benefit, because I'm a little younger than everyone here i think i had the benefit of like coming up in the heyday of myspace and stuff when we everyone was doing leet speak for some fucking reason oof Ooh, yeah <laughs> i remember came to fruition during myspace you're not that much younger than everybody here yeah well i mean he's <laughs> what you're 30 ish 30 yeah i think omega's a little bit younger than you but yeah i think oh, yeah? the rest of us are all in our mid 30s yeah Things changed fast at that point. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, just, it's weird how... Uh, I just... I like the, the concept, but I don't know. I don't I don't know if a two... Unless they yeah, set it in the 90s. Because um, if they did that... That could work. Really. Like, yeah. they pull, uh, like, uh, uh, Stranger Things type like you know remake the 90s really make it feel like it's a 90s movie um you know but have the you know updated like you know i think that would be the best bet what they should do is record the tones the coins make and then call someone who gives a fuck <laughs> <laughs> what scares me is that they're gonna try going with some kind of like cyberpunky like like new future, future type thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah Reeves is gonna be in it. Is that what's up? No, it'll be a lot of VR. Yeah, oh. Oculus. Is gonna yeah, sponsor. It's gonna be like all VR. Ready Player One, but hackers version. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That I worries me. I would much rather have like a like you say like a real nostalgic like really feels like a '90s. Or keep it with that feel. Bring all the old actors back. <laughs> oh yeah, bring it. Yeah, if you bring all the old actors back and have it just like be an updated version, like remake of it, like know? or later in their life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bring back even the fucking uh, dude who you know he finally gets out of prison and comes you know, <laughs> after the kids. The plague. Like, the plague. The plague. <laughs> Mister the plague. Mister the plague, sir. The plague. <laughs> Oh god. Dude, the one scene that no matter how many times I see it I will always cringe is when he comes up on the on the skateboard to grab yeah. the tape from him. <laughs> Rip. Enjoy the laptop, cool. Don't worry. <laughs> Your mom is safe, kid. <laughs> Great movie. I love the uh, uh when he he goes he's like uh, he calls her God and uh, and it's like so she just calls herself her pat. Her password is what she calls herself. <laughs> really? Who would ever guess? Apparently, someone didn't read my memo on the four most commonly used passwords. <laughs> <laughs> sex. Oh, sex. Love. Sex. Secret. Yeah. God. And. Password. Password. Yep. Password. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These turns wasn't passed. It's a little late for even God. Three letters. Yeah, though, it was, no, it was love, God, sex, secret, God. Yeah, I, I yeah, God none of those. Sorry. None of those words meet the password complexity requirements <laughs> of 1995. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. <laughs> it's God with a zero and an exclamation point. Right, and it's actually a dog. Um, unfortunately, in 2013, a study was done and found the most common passwords actually were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, password, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and QWERTY. <laughs> Wait, what's the last one? QWERTY. Like Q-W-E-R-T-Y. keyboard, Q-W-E-R-T-Y. Oh. I just across the home row up there. <laughs> <laughs> Real nerds would have used Dvorak as their password. AWSD. <laughs> there we go. WASD. W-A-S-D. Yeah. <laughs> My password is corny. It's quarantine and horny. 
My, my password is always just my nowadays. last password with another exclamation point at the end. If I have to change it. Or if it won't let me do exclamation points anymore because now there's three of those in a row, I'll switch to the at symbol. <laughs> <laughs> or pound. Whatever whatever we're on now. <laughs> uh, I hate changing my passwords. I do it all the fucking Well, there, I mean, the more studies that are, I've been reading on recently is basically that changing passwords and having all these, like, millions of different passwords and trying to keep, like, this complex list of insane combinations in our brain just doesn't work for the average human so most people are just writing down their passwords and storing them in unsafe spots um, and, or having the most simple stupid passwords or having all the passwords the same type stuff and it's like the, the best thing for companies to be to be doing is not having people changing their passwords all the time because if they're changing their passwords all the time then they're fucking up their that recommendation finally came out within the last like year or so that companies should only change force password changes if there's a suspicion that there's a reason to essentially um, but like the problem with that is it doesn't work for your average person either like on paper it's better but unless you get your average user using like some kind of hardware based like password storage or something like that like it's it's never gonna work well that's why they're going for MFA now they're like you know what everyone just use whatever fucking password you want just make sure you have your phone on you <laughs> yeah has anyone else been affected by the T-Mobile Sprint merger my Sprint service sucks ass now uh I was on T-Mobile to begin with so I haven't noticed anything <laughs> Oh, it still sucks ass, is that what you're saying? Uh, no, see, the nice thing is, like, as long as you don't go to the East Town Mall area, State Street, and you stay within the Madison borders, it's perfectly good. <laughs> it's a problem for me, because I live in the Twin Cities. <laughs> yeah, that'll cause some issues. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's terrible as soon as I leave Madison. Um, if you look at a map of the coverage around here, it, like cuts off 30 miles to the east and then it's just like dead until you get to Madison so I just don't leave town <laughs> coming for them and DoorDash at the same time <laughs> <laughs> uh, see it's a cultural issue with DoorDash then it's just that Minnesota nice that's not a real thing I, I know nobody I got a bunch of family and friends thing. up there <laughs> Minnesota mean. Minnesota is the first place I ever saw someone flash a gun at me from a car next to me just because uh, they had cut me off. Were you by <laughs> Brooklyn Park or Midway? Uh, we were getting, we were taking, I can't remember where we were, it was an off-ramp downtown Minneapolis. That's about right. <laughs> he cut oh, us oh. off getting onto the on-ramp, so we honked at him. We, we got up to the red light at the end of the on, or the end of the off-ramp. And uh, he was next to us at the red light, and we looked over, and he was just like holding a pistol up and looking at us, and we we're like, "Are you fucking serious right now?" <laughs> so can, we, can you imagine if so, you'd been like an officer or an FBI agent or something? <laughs> <laughs> just convenient cop moment. Pulls out your badge, and suddenly <laughs> you want to go, bro? <laughs> oh, On the drone. Doubling down. Or like a Navy SEAL or something. <laughs> yeah, I was just like so confused. I was like, dude, you cut us off. You're flashing a gun because we honked at you. Like, go home. <laughs> yeah, I keep it real, but he keeps it realer. <laughs> dude, uh, not that I'm promoting it in any way, shape, or form, uh, but uh, my wife watches uh, Teen Mom. And one of them, <laughs> like, literally with a kid in her uh, car, like, like follows a guy, like, brandishes a gun at him, like, almost, like, like runs him off the road, like, thing, like, and, and then, like, a cop comes and, like, just is like, you get a warning, you know, don't, like, you shouldn't be brandishing your weapon at people. That's an extra layer of stupid, because you're doing it with MTV cameras following you. 
Yeah. Yeah, it was on MTV with a kid in her car. Like, and I'm really not sure how you get off with a warning on that. I don't yeah, know. I don't think it was sufficient, unless you're unless these are Canadian cops. No, these were fucking southern cops. You watch Under Arrest on uh, Netflix, which is Canadian cops. They like find a lady with a knife and she threatens someone, and they're like, "She's just gonna get a warning, or we're gonna give her a lift home." <laughs> <laughs> That's how cops used to be. <laughs> Back when you could, like, in the 70s and 80s, get caught doing dumb shit, and they'd be like, I'm going to drive you home, and your parents can deal with you. Well, that's uh, <laughs> 70s and 80s yeah. white. If you were white, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair correction. Um, that's how cops used to be if you were like them. <laughs> right. And if not, you end up lynched or which, dead or which in is why jail. Which got off hey, with brandishing her weapon and fucking... Hunting down oh, the yeah. guy and like, doing all this crazy shit because they were just like, oh, she's sure, sure. you know, a young little girl who did not understand she's just trying to protect herself. Yeah. He was trying to she protect other everybody. people's property coming across state lines with an AR. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't know how to protect them, you know? People in the deep state protect themselves. <laughs> How will the government protect itself if, if the people don't do it for them? Ion cannon. <laughs> Ion cannon. Oh man, if someone's Dan got like an orbital bombardment out there and they're listening, just do it. <laughs> Did you guys just see that outside? <laughs> no. Looks like Meteor Wisconsin's Trump. good for now. I think a meteor shower is probably the best thing that could happen to Wisconsin right now. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. why not? I would take a meteor shower. Like Perseids, is that around now, or do we miss it already? Oh, we missed that already now. Mm. Curses. I saw some boards where people were talking about closing the border to Wisconsin here because so many people crossed from Hudson to work over here in the cities and Wisconsin's got such high rates of corona that people are like no no just close the borders <laughs> I saw something today about I keep getting told by Trump supporters that if I don't like it I should leave the country and I'd just like to let you know I tried no one will let us come in because you guys fucked this up so bad <laughs> <laughs> Canadian border is closed. I was there two weeks ago. Yep. Also, the duty-free store is closed because I guess technically, if the border is not open, the duty-free store can't be open. Oh. Towards the beginning of all this, in like late springish, I think, early mid spring, I don't know. We went to go try and buy a kayak, and uh. That was the day that we learned that the large majority of kayaks are manufactured in Canada. And all of the stores that normally expected to have like 200 in stock had like three. So, if you're into kayaking, I guess move to Canada if you want to ensure delivery. Emergency. Emergency. We must vote. Oh. Next tier of the thing that we were all supporting earlier. Only this tier adds a rejection to sprawl and housing. So it's good. Got some good solid support for it already. Ooh, we've been. Nexus has jumped on to the bandwagon on that one. It's like uh, Assembly of Camdor. They're in breach. Are they? Oh no, they're not. The only way you're in breach is if you have slaves. Yeah, the. Uh... Uh, Combine of Miravandia, Prima, Slavers. Oh, my Admiral died at the age of 203. 
<laughs> wow. All the AI is op opposed, but all the players are in support. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Aren't I supposed to have some kind of cool option after like finishing all of the uh, traditions? Yeah, they're under edicts. They're called campaigns. You have to research it from the tech tree first, though. Uh, I haven't got that option yet. Yeah, you'll get one more. Um... I've just been doing repeatables for like freaking ever. You should have. Okay. Uh, so, you have when you go into your uh, traditions. Relics, if you go to tradition, you have uh -huh. all of your ascension perks filled out. Uh huh. Every single ascension perk? Yep. Okay, go into edicts and scroll all the way down and you should see ambition. Yep. Um, those are the special things that you can Cool. I can. <laughs> you can be the kitty. <laughs> yeah. Which one is that? Layla, she wants to go outside. Something to do with robots for the robot one. We must not have not activated enough jump games in order to activate that one. I didn't try for a while. But... See, we can't get AI rebellion because I banned AI. You see. <laughs> <laughs> Not at this rate. And massing defenses on all planets.
three years in so far. Technological acquisition successful. possible to get an end game before you actually so I'm reading about it right now after 50 years into the end game crisis um, the year 2000 uh, 2400 on default the crisis will roll once every five years until the crisis takes place with the following ways okay so So it doesn't even start rolling until 2050, or 20, uh, 2550. So we definitely won't get the end game crisis until the next two or three games. Or one, one of these games. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, I'm well stabilized now. Um, because we have, if any default empire has synthetic technology and more than 50% mechanical pop four times, um, we increase for the contingency every year. If any <laughs> empire has side drives, um, that's for the extra, uh, extra dimensional invaders. I would have done that, but you guys killed the Fallen Empire before I could steal that from them. <laughs> and then if more than 60 year end game passes, uh, it's times 2 for the uh, Scourge, times 3 at 80, and times 4 at 100. So at the very least, all of the way. So, oh, there is uh, a weight of 120. So, yeah, we are definitely not going to hit the end game. And it is time. Time. Thousand. Is it my fault holding you guys up? No. No. No, it's just time. No. Nope. You were, uh, you were, I was checking every once in a while, you were doing fine. It's like Omega's behind by a day. I'm on current day. I can't believe we did not hit the end game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Move next time. Move it up. Alright, game is saved, folks. You can exit gracefully. Still gotta catch up with those robots and pops. Ugh. Good luck. <laughs> well, I passed one robot just recently. Yeah, Josh shut down like all of his pop production. I only shut down half of it. Yeah, and you have... 2k more pops than me, so I need to keep gaining on you. Is that the ultimate warrior slapping Mr. Perfect? I, yeah, I think so. so. Ooh.